sorry to disappoint Miss Lizzo, but I am not feeling good as hell. <laughs> and I do need to record a video, so I thought I would record this um, quick unboxing because I do have some packages that I haven't opened yet and I thought it would be fun to open on camera because two are from really interesting, important, fantastic friends of mine. And I thought it would be cute, it would be fun to open. <laughs> And maybe by recording this and just getting happy with the gifts that my friends sent me, I will feel better for the video that I need to record. So let's do this. This is really cute. This has a very cute packaging and it's from my friend Shelby. Literally as we speak, Shelby is texting me, who girl? <laughs> Anyways, this is a very cute package. This is, ay dios mio. Mio. Um, sorry, so, can we just talk about the beautiful stunning, I don't want to open this. This is literally, I just want to, I just want to paste this on my wall. Like what? Miss Shelby, she sent me this tote bag, this tie dye tote bag that I believe she did. And like she has one for herself and she just had this extra one and she was like, do you like this? And I was like, sis, I'm in my tote bag era, as you can see. Like my collection of tote bags has just been growing over these past couple of months. And now I have an extra special tote bag that was handmade by Miss Shelby. She does have a YouTube. She is on a very prolonged hiatus, but um... <laughs> Maybe if we all go to her YouTube channel and tell her that we love her and we want her back, she'll come back. But look at this. Look at me with my new tote bag. Stunning. Beautiful. Brilliant. Now this has a very special thing inside. It's something that she... Oh my god, it's right there. Maybe I don't have to open it. Maybe I can just take it out. <laughs> I, I, oh, I don't want to take it out. Stop! Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Okay, I'm gonna take it out. Um, it's basically, oh my God, look at that. Look, look at Mr. No Face. And this is like, this is so well done. Like she did this by herself, by her lonesome, with her own talent. Oh my God, I am clinically obsessed with this. I want to be buried with this. That's like the highest compliment I could ever give something or someone. To want to be buried with it is just like, you can't go any higher than that. You know what I mean? Stop. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to open this on my lonesome because some things just cannot be shared. But wow, I'm sorry. I'm just obsessed with one Shelby. But anyways, let's continue. <laughs> I have this Amazon package and I haven't ordered anything that should be arriving as fast as this did. So I'm thinking this is a gift from who I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Do you guys want to see it first? You know, you guys always get first looks. Oh my God, it's a book. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. Um. Is this crying in H Mart? Is this crying in H Mart? Is this crying, crying in, in H, H Mart? Floppiness, yes indeed, yes sir, 10 out of 10. An unflinching powerful story of family, food, grief, and love. Yes! So this is a memoir and I've just heard nothing but amazing things honestly about crying in H Mart. I've heard that people cry not in H Mart, but wherever they're reading this book, they just end up crying over it. And I have had my share of crying over books recently. I have quite a few book-inspired crying sessions, and I feel like this is just going to add to that list, and I honestly can't wait. Memoirs are definitely not part of my comfort zone, but I feel like lately I've been walking out of it and expanding the limits of the types of genres that I read. So maybe this is a new era of Throne of Pages. Maybe memoirs and literary fiction is what my channel is going to become. I definitely feel like I'm reading less and less fantasy, which is okay. Like I do love fantasy and I do miss it sometimes. Like when I think of when I first read 
Sarah J Moss and when I first read Cassandra Clare I feel like those days were the good days I think or maybe I'm just romanticizing the past which would not be weird of me I do do that a lot I know I shouldn't but I do so maybe I should try and pick up a fantasy soon because I don't know I kind of miss it but I don't know if I'm just outgrowing the genre <laughs> Sorry, this is not the time to have this conversation. Oh, thank God, I thought there was no note, but there is. Hi Bella, I absolutely love your videos so much. I recently joined the Premium Simpers. Hi, hi. Um, Premium Simpers are my Patreons. If you're not, um, if you're not aware of the secret, ultra secretive secret society, <laughs> um, it's me and my Premium Simpers against the world at this point. Hope you enjoy crying to this book as much as I did. Have a wonderful day from Megan. Thank you so much, Megan. I am about to jump into your DMs and thank you for such a wonderful book. I have been wanting to read this for the longest time and now because of you, I can. So thank you for this. I am very excited and you will definitely be seeing this in a vlog, hopefully soon if my mental health allows it. <laughs> Let's clean up because mess just is not the aesthetic today. We have this next package and it's also an Amazon box, not box, envelope. It's also from Amazon. Once again, I haven't really ordered anything that should be arriving this soon. So we'll both see what this is together. That's Mariana Zapata. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this. Yeah, 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 There's just something, there's just something, there's just something about a good smelling book that sets all of my cells on fire. This is Dear Erin by the Mariana Zapata. This was sent to me. I don't even need to see the note because Allie spoiled this. Uh, she's spoiling me and then she spoiled the surprise, but it's like, I am glad that she spoiled it because the fact that I knew that I had this to look forward to made it easier to wake up every morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hi Bella, I had to get you this after I read it and absolutely loved it. it I would have never tried Mariana Zapata if it weren't for you and the server. Oh, you. Yeah. I hope your day is as wonderful and as beautiful as you. From Allie! Okay, so basically I'm being spoiled by my premium simps today because Allie is also one of my favorite premium simpers. Hi, hello, yes I said it. Allie, Miss Allie if you're watching. Thank you for this. Thank you for expanding my Mariana Zapata collection. The video that I'm about to film, I do talk about the fact that Mariana Zapata has become a new favorite author and i just cannot wait to read this i know this follows the sister of our main character in from look up with love so and it follows her story and how she found her husband and it's just really interesting because apparently it's told through letters and through emails and i find that very interesting i love it when books experiment with different formats and i know that maria zapata is not going to let me down i feel like i've read three of her books none of them have let me down all of them have made me squeal and scream and cry and just violently fangirl, basically. Yeah, Mariana Zapata just brings out the fangirl in me and the hopeless romantic, of course. Alive and thriving, thank you so much. So thank you so much, Allie, for this. I am so happy. <laughs> this was 100% probably the best idea I've had this whole month because if I would have recorded that video without doing this unboxing, it would have just been like, Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> but now I'm like genuinely happy. So here's to my premium simps for doing the absolute most. We do have one more letter and this is very special. This is from my friend Val. We've recently been bonding over K-pop <laughs> and Seventeen specifically. We have been living, laughing, loving, and doing it together has just been so fun. So she sent me something. Stop, I'm trembling. She sent me something very exciting. Hi, hello, hi. Okay, stop. This is chock full of stuff, stop. 
I have never seen someone write my name as pretty as Val. Look at this. Look at this. I don't. Stop. Oh! <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move the, the camera so you guys can see the stickers with me. What is this? <gasps> this is so <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see the stickers with me, but oh my god, Val, talented, brilliant, show-stopping, put it on a blender, never before done before. Thank you so much for this. I'm literally obsessed with these. I can't believe you thought for a second that I wouldn't love these. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> look at my name. Screaming, crying. Right, so we saw Death Note together. So she's added like a couple of Death Notes to us. Oh my God. Is this, this is a conundrum. Not sure what these are. I will ask Val about them. Stop this immediately! Oh my god. I love this. I I cannot. I cannot. Oh, oh my god. Mr. Light with his coffee. Let's go! Oof. Oof. That's right. I am Kira. Okay, but his face? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my god, there's so many. I'm screaming. God, I love this so much. Exactly, Crow president of the Kira fan club. I love this. <laughs> this is my new favorite thing. This is everything. I can't believe this. This is so good. Oh my God, there's literally so many. <gasps> wow. Oh my God, of course, L with his little cake. I love him. Of course, of course, babe, 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 babe. Babes on babes on babes. <gasps> not this. <laughs> Sorry, I was not ready for this one. <laughs> so this is making me more emotional than it should. I'm still not over 358 over two days and Val is making me relive all of my suppressed emotions <laughs> stop oh we got some color ellen light okay oh babe babe oh my god i love i just can't believe this oof child i love these so much oh my god baby baby um screaming crying perfect storm i love this so much oh my god literally depression i don't know her i feel like i haven't been acquainted with her unfortunately sorry we i don't i'm not going to let her into my home at this moment in time because i'm just surrounded by so much love and beauty and Oh my god, the vibes that I've just received from all of these wonderful people. I am so grateful to every single one of you and the people watching. You just, I don't know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's overwhelming to know that so many people rely on you as a source of happiness because then it's like, okay, but when I'm sad, what am I supposed to do? I feel so happy right now and it's all thanks to you guys. Like not even the people who sent me stuff, but also the people that are watching right now. You have a hand in making somebody happy today and that person is me and I'm very, very grateful to every single one of you. I am so happy and I'm definitely in a, in a much better mood to film the video that I have to film right now. So thank you so much for that. I'm gonna go work now, but thank you. I just, I can't. Val, Shelby, Megan, and Allie, you are today's MVP. Wait, it wouldn't be MVP, it would be MVS, most valuable simp. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. You guys are the most valuable simps of the day. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for thinking of me and for putting a smile on my face. Um, it is much appreciated. So I'm gonna go film the video now and wish me luck. I will talk to you guys later.
Bye bye. Later. So I just finished recording my mid-year book freakout tag as well as sharing some reading stats with you guys. So if you're interested on that video, I will leave it up here or up here somewhere. So you guys should definitely check it out. I am actually really grateful that I decided to do the unboxing before I recorded that video because I feel like the energy is just so much more positive and that's sort of the vibe that I want with every video that I do. I don't really want to record a video when I'm feeling down. I want to do my best at spreading good vibes and positivity. So I'm definitely really grateful that I did that unboxing and that my spirits were um, rejuvenated. Is that the word? So yeah, I finished recording, but I realized that I still want to talk to you guys. Like I have a couple of days where I just haven't been feeling my best and Today I'm having a good day and I feel like I don't want to let that day pass without using it as much as I can. So I thought that I would talk to you guys about the books that I've been reading recently and also about this one show that I've been watching. Um, I have been watching Fruits Basket, but I don't know why. I just haven't continued. I'm on episode six and I feel like I'm really struggling to like it because I don't like the main character. I find her voice so grating and so annoying and it's kind of hard to appreciate everybody else when she's just constantly in the background and also when we're on her mind and she's thinking and i'm just like sis yeah, shut, shut up. up but obviously she's the main character it's this reverse harem so i decided to take a break because i wasn't loving it as much as i wanted to and by taking that break i randomly started this new korean reality show that popped up on my netflix it's called change days and it is so dramatic and it is so good it's literally so dramatic and i'm so I'm so sorry for being that girl that watches reality TV show, but it's so entertaining. It's this show where couples that are having trouble in their relationship go to this place and they sort of like test out different partners to see if if they really can't work on their relationship, they might as well break up and you can find your partner in that new place. So it's really like, it's really intense. And it's sad at times because, you know, a relationship is falling apart, but at the same time, one of them is finding love with somebody else. So it's kind of hard when that happens right in front of your eyes. It's hard for them, but it's very entertaining for me. So thank you for your pain. It's being very appreciated. So I've been spending my days watching that. There's only three episodes out. So while I wait for new episodes, I have been reading. <laughs> I have been reading quite a couple of books for like different reading challenges. I recently finished the reading A Clockwork Reader's Favorite Books challenge and I read really wonderful books for that video. I think that because I've been doing so many reading challenges, I've just been girl bossing too close to the sun, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think um, my mood has been definitely influenced by all of the stuff that I've been doing and I haven't really had a chance to catch a break so I've sort of started seeing reading as a chore like just reading is a challenge at this point so I'm kind of surprised that I'm in the middle of three books and I'm enjoying all of them but it's so hard to pick it back up when I put it down so that's what I've been struggling with lately let me know what you've been struggling with uh, the first book that I've been reading is actually a reread and it is The House of Hades written by Rick Riordan, Uncle Rick. I am on page 113. I am in the middle of a Percy chapter and if you know how Mark of Athena ends and if you've read House of Hades, you know that the first couple of Percy chapters, they hurt. They are painful and because of that, it's kind of hard for me to pick this book back up because Every time I pick it up, my favorite characters are suffering and that's not great. <laughs> I've been slowly rereading all of the books in the Heroes of Olympus series again with my friend Sid and we are currently on the House of Hades. We are having a grand old time just watching our favorites suffer, crying a little bit, suffering, dying on the inside. But I have put myself some daily goals. I have not reached them. <laughs> I did do these as daily goals, but I feel like they're more suggestions at this point. It's like, hey, maybe you can reach that point, but if you don't, that's fine. It'll be there tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I am literally, wow. The fact that I stopped reading 
before I reach the goal, literally one page before I reach the daily goal. So, can you tell my mental health is declining? declining? Like, wow, the fact that I stopped reading one page before my daily goal. You know the amount of self-satisfaction that I could have gotten from one more page? Disgusting. <laughs> the other book that I'm reading comes as no surprise. There is an ant in my book. Hi, welcome to the tropics. <laughs> Uh, the next book that I've been reading is no surprise to many of you that have been watching my vlogs for a while. The Unabridged Journals of Sylvia Plath, written by Sylvia Plath. Um, you know, <laughs> still here, still going through it. Well, she's going through it. Well, now I am as well. Maybe it's because of Sylvia Plath that I'm going through it. Anyways, I'm in page 315 and my goal for June is not really to finish this book, but I do want to reach my next goal, which is page 425. I'm in 315, so I'm missing 110 pages to reach my monthly goal, which should be doable, but also it's becoming very dense in the sense that it's not it's not a fun time anymore <laughs> i'm not having fun and it's not even because it's sad but it's just kind of become this stream of consciousness that has no hold on me in terms of interest it's kind of like when you're working on a project and you have this blank sheet of paper where you just write random words that come to you that have no meaning at all but you just kind of want to write it down just in case or when you're doing a daily to-do list and you're just like, oh, stand up, walk for a little, maybe wash my hands, maybe drink some water. Or when you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh, maybe I should get some milk. Maybe I should try the vegan one. Or maybe I should get some grapes. Or maybe I should get some orange juice. It's kind of like that. And you know those people that say, I love this author so much, I would even read their shopping list. I feel like Sylvia Plath does not fit that category. I would not read this woman's list because I'm actually reading her shopping list and it's not great. It's not, yeah. Which of course, again, these are her journals. It's not her job to entertain us. Um, it's also not my job to read it. So I'm kind of battling with that at the moment. I pick it up whenever I'm feeling extremely existential and I just want something to sort of like drive the point home that nothing matters. So yeah, <laughs> this is the other book that I'm reading. <laughs> I'm really like, guys, guys, any good vibes that you can send my way, I would highly appreciate it. If you could do like maybe one or two prayer circles a day for me in my honor. That would be highly appreciated. The other book that I'm making my way through is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I am rereading this for my Patreons because I am preparing to do an annotated flip through for them. And I'm really excited to read this because I've only read it once. I read it in 2019 through audiobook. And this time around, I wanna see if I like it as much if I read it physically. So far, the answer is no. <laughs> I mean, I can't really say much because I am only on page 16, so the good stuff hasn't started happening, but maybe it's because of my reading slump, maybe it's because I just haven't been in the right headspace, but I am not vibing to the story as much as I was in 2019. So yeah, I don't have much to say about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, except for the fact that I'm really happy that my bookmark sort of matches the aesthetic of this book. Like I really worked hard on finding a bookmark that matched the aesthetic of Evelyn Hugo. So if I could get like a few congrats for that, I would really appreciate that. It would really like stroke my ego if you did that. So as you can see, I'm just in a very silly, goofy mood. And these are the three books that I'm currently in the middle of. They are very different from each other. We've got a sort of memoir, I want to say. I don't really know what this would be. I would call this a memoir. This is middle grade fantasy. And then this is contemporary adult fiction. I don't. My phone stopped me because I ran out of memory. Uh, so I'm going to take that as a sign that I need to be stopped. I have been stopped. No off topic questions. I have been stopped. <laughs> And yeah, I will catch up with you guys later, but I hope you're enjoying the vlog so far. And we'll j let's, let's just continue. I just wanted to show you the aftermath of recording a video. We've got books, 
We've got my bunny thing. We've got post-its with the name of the glasses that I have to talk about. Um, we have my mug here. Hi, love is eternal. We have my computer sitting. Oh, it's me. Hi. <laughs> Anyways, we've got more books. We've got packages. We've got more glasses. And yeah, so I really need to do some, what's that word? Tidying up. I don't know if I'm going to do this today. <laughs> I mean, I should. I probably should. I just don't want to. I just kind of want to play Animal Crossing. Oh, to be an adult. I don't want to be an adult today. <laughs>
morning, good afternoon, good night if you're watching this before you go to bed. I hope you're enjoying the vlog so far. Full offense, this vlog has been sitting on my computer, in my computer, on me. This vlog has been sitting in slash on my computer for the longest time unedited like i have so much footage and i just can't i haven't been in like the right mood to start editing this vlog but i feel like if i keep on waiting for the mood to arrive this vlog is just never going to see the light of day so i think it's time to force myself to feel better <laughs> i think it's enough is enough sometimes it's good to give yourself some space to heal to rest if you're tired it's good to like take a second and breathe but you gotta know when enough is enough when sometimes you just need to push yourself to do stuff even though you don't want to and this is me pushing myself because if there's something that always makes me happy is talking to you guys and connecting and knowing that i'm not alone so i thought it would be fun Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'd be fun to talk about my reading updates because I have been doing some reading these past few days and I also got some boxes in the mail. So I thought it'd be fun to unbox them together. It's always nice to share the excitement. I don't even know where to begin. Okay, the first update, I finished House of Hades by Uncle Rick, Rick Riordan. This is a 3.5 out of five stars for me. I don't know why. But I just felt like it was very slow going and none of the scenes hit as much as others in, for example, Mark of Athena. I feel like that book is definitely the highlight of this whole series. And to come from the Mark of Athena into the House of Hades, it was a little bit of a shock and not in the best way because I feel like the pacing of this book wasn't as good as it could have been and of course we do get a lot of piper and jason in this book uh which is something that we didn't get in mark of athena i feel like in mark of athena we only got like five chapters of jason and that was one too many if you know what i mean so in this one we i think we had like a hundred pages of jason chapters and that <laughs> That really took a toll on my mental health. I mean, I think it's safe to say that the main reason that I've been struggling so much with my mental health is because I had to spend so much time with Jason and Piper. <laughs> I'm sure they have redeeming qualities. I don't know what they are, but Uncle Rick made them for a reason. I'm not sure what reason that is, but they're alive, they're there, and I have to come to terms with that in order to continue on with the story. So once I moved on <laughs> from those chapters, I did manage to finish The House of Hades, and it was a good time. I don't know why, but I remembered it being better than it actually is. That's not to say that I didn't enjoy this book, but The Mark of Athena was definitely like 10 times better than The House of Hades, and now I have started reading, right, so Harry Potter is down, Harry Potter is dead, Harry Potter has no feet anymore. <laughs> anyways, I have started, <laughs> anyways, I have started The Blood of Olympus and I am, according to my feetless Harry bookmark, I am on page 272. I am in the middle of a Jason chapter. I feel like every time that I put this book down, it's because I've encountered either a Jason or a Piper chapter. And honestly, Piper is a bit more tolerable than Jason because when we're with Piper, we're with Annabeth and anything Annabeth related, I'm just like, okay, 10 out of 10, five out of five, let's go. The main thing that I remember from Blood of Olympus is that everybody hated this book. Uh, everybody was really disappointed with the way that Uncle Rick decided to end this series or like wrap it all up. I remember people saying that it's very rushed and it just didn't feel like it was given the same care as the other books in the series, so... <laughs> I am a bit hesitant to reread this because I remember feeling the same way. I do remember the way that this ends and I remember not liking it and thinking that it was ridiculous and a cop out and it just feels like Uncle Rick got tired of this series and just decided to end it because he was like, 
I don't know what else to do with these characters. So let me just end it with the silliest, goofiest thing that I can imagine. No spoilers if you haven't read it, but if you've read it, then you know what I'm talking about. It was, yeah. I think the only thing that's making me happy right now is the fact that I'm rereading this with Sid. So sharing our favorite moments and, you know, just roasting paper, paper and Jason, sorry, Piper and Jason. Uh, yeah, I love roasting Piper and Jason with Sid. We always have such a fun time. So that's definitely been the highlight of this reread for me. Of course, apart from spending time with Percy, Annabeth, and Leo, those are my top three. And Frank is also one of my favorites. You can definitely see how his character progresses and how it develops as the books keep moving forward. And I really love the growth that Frank goes through and all of the things that he has to do. I really respect his character. Like, I really love all five heroes that we get in this journey. I do have one more reading update, but before we get to that one, I thought it would be interesting to break it up with one unboxing. So this is interesting because it's a big box, but it feels empty. So I'm very curious as to why. <laughs> Why does that remind me of the back of a Funko, like the bottom of a Funko Pop box? <laughs> Are you kidding? This is not real. This, this is not real. What? <laughs> um, are, yeah. this is, this is, my dearest friend, if you don't mind, I'd like to join you by your side where we can gaze into the stars and sit together now and forever, for it is plain as anyone can see, we're simply meant to be. <laughs> um. <laughs> They've been spoiling me. That's literally the only word I can use for what RG has been doing lately. They've just been spoiling the heck out of me. Like they've sent me some stunning books. They also sent me Jack. Like, come on, wait, is it, there you go. Here, hi, him, it's him. I, I don't, <laughs> I understand now why some people are like, I don't even wanna take this out of the box, but I have to, I have to. Okay, this is the preview. This is how, sorry, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna actually cry. <laughs> um no 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 are you seeing what i'm seeing <laughs> i literally don't know what to say i am i i i am the definition of speechless I'm over the edge. I'm just breathless. I, I'm so sorry. I literally have no words to describe what I'm feeling right now. I don't know how to explain how happy this makes me. Right, I'm so sorry. I'm literally so speechless. I don't, I, oh my God. It's like he's singing to her. Anyways, I don't know if you know this about me, but The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my all-time favorite movies. I watch it maybe once every month. Like, it's not a Christmas movie, it's not a Halloween movie, it's an every month type of movie. And RG did this. This is what they did. I feel like thank you doesn't even begin to cover what I'm feeling right now, but honestly, like, thank you so much for this, for this, thank you for this. Thank you. I honestly don't know what to say. <laughs> Apart from the fact that I'm going to protect you with my whole life, I would lay down my life for both of you and for RG. Um, just them, it's them, sorry. It's them, it's them for me, it's them. Yeah, no, that's literally, but I've peaked. This is literally the peak of my life. Wow. I still have no idea what to say. Like, thank you so much for this. Oh my God, I'm going to cherish this. 
I'm going to give this to my children and my children's children. It'll be passed down from generation to generation. A few moments later. Um, I took a quick break because I just wanted to spend some time with my new gift, my new babies. I just had to spend some time with them. And yeah, I'm still not over the fact that I own that now and it's all thanks to RG. Um, yeah, I'm still like reeling over such an amazing gift and being so lucky to have beautiful viewers and beautiful people like you guys watching me and spending time with me. It's literally such a dream and it made me really emotional. So I had to take a quick step back, but like emotional in a good way. Like, don't worry. It was just kind of like this really stunning, beautiful reminder that, you know, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's just a really beautiful thing. It's a really amazing gift and I really appreciate that. But before I bore you with my gratitude, I did have one more reading update and it's of the Unabridged Journals of Sylvia Plath. So the last time, let me put my coffee down. The last time that we spoke about the Unabridged Journals of Sylvia Plath, I mentioned how I was kind of losing interest because it was turning into this sort of stream of consciousness that I had no interest in reading and it was getting really hard to just flip the page and focus on what Sylvia was writing about. But as soon as I filmed that update, I picked the book back up and it got good. It got good again. And by that, I mean, Sylvia Plath started to go through it again. <laughs> I mean, she never stopped going through it, but it kind of got worse. And I feel like Sylvia Plath does such a good job at writing about pain and writing about depression. It's so hauntingly beautiful that it's so hard to put down at times. I actually ended up reaching my monthly goal. I reached this part of her journals and I'm currently on page 445. This is where I am. And for me to officially finish the Unabridged journals, I'm only missing this. So the last official page is 530 i'm in page 445 so 90 pages give or give or take but then i have the appendices and the notes and the acknowledgements and i have been reading a couple of the appendixes just because throughout the journals the editor does mention in appendix number five you can read more about this entry so i've sort of been going back and forth between the entries and the appendices. So I have made some progress in the appendices as well. Appendices, sorry. And I am in appendix number 15, hi. Of the appendices, I feel like this is really confusing, but the point is I'm missing this of the appendices, appendices, and then I'm missing, you know what, nobody cares. <laughs> this is, um, yeah. The point is I've reached my June goal for the Unabridged Journals of Sylvia Plath. We still have a few more days in the month, so I feel like I can read even more. And I won't say finish the book this month because I do have more than 100 pages if we add up what I'm missing from the journal entries and then what I'm missing from the appendices. So it's more than 100 pages and I don't really want to promise that I'm going to finish this because if, then if I don't, I'm going to feel bad. So I think I'd rather just keep the pace that I have right now, not really expect anything, not really put a deadline on when I should finish this and just pick it up when I'm feeling like I want to. It's looking really beautiful. I have spent my mornings recently with Sylvia and I won't say it's a great way to spend your mornings. Like it's not a great way to start your day because right now her husband just cheated on her and she's really struggling with that. And it's so sad because she blames herself. It's not great. You know what I mean? It's not great. The parallels between Sylvia and the bell jar have definitely become more prominent in her journals. The more that she struggles and the more that she talks about these struggles, the more that you can see and understand where Esther came from. And that's, you know, that's always sad because Esther obviously does not have a good life. That's my reading update with Sylvia Plath. Fingers crossed I keep on liking it and it doesn't get bored again but I don't think so because the way that it's going <laughs> yeah I don't see her recovering 
anytime soon. <laughs> we have one more box to open for this video and this one is pretty heavy. Again, not really sure what's in this box, but we'll just see together, I guess. It's pink. There's something black. Oh my God, I ordered this. I can't believe I forgot about this. <laughs> Right, this is, uh, I don't know if I should show this to you guys because this is for a video. Ooh. I'll just show you because you probably won't guess what these books are for. Uh, but basically the first book that I got is The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. Hopefully I'm saying that right, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, why, why is it like that? Who touched this book? Who, who did that? I do not respect. So yeah, this is this book. Love the pink. This is going to fit so well in my pink shelf. I can't wait to read it so that I can actually put it on my shelf. In three immensely intelligent stories about the decay of passion, the author draws us into the lives of three women, all past their first youth, all facing unexpected crises. Enthralling as fiction, suffused with Beauvoir's remarkable insights into women, The Woman Destroyed gives us a legendary writer at her best. This is the first book that I got, and then I also got everything I know about parties, dates, friends, jobs, life, love by Dolly Alderton. This is a memoir, so definitely very outside of my comfort zone. That's not what the video is about. I am not reading out of my comfort zone. That's not the main focus of the video, but these two books are pretty much very far from my comfort zone. I got some more pens because mine ran out of ink. I got some fairy lights, which will hopefully work. I don't know why they're open already. That's kind of sus, but fingers crossed they work. And I also got this really stunning, really beautiful, sleek, sleek socket. socket. <laughs> Sorry, this is since my bookshelves are against the wall, they're also covering the wall sockets. And I don't I don't know why I'm explaining this to you guys. <laughs> I, like, I'm so sorry for boring you with all of this, but basically, that was a very interesting haul. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what video you think I'm recording next, what reading experiment, reading challenge I'm working on. And if you guess it right, I mean, you'll get brownie points. And I feel like I am very, what's that word when you don't give them out easily? I'm very... <laughs> I forgot the word. I don't give brownie points out very easily. So if you get brownie points from me, it's like, oof. You can put that in your resume. I've got brownie points from Throne of Pages. That's that's very good. Anyways, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. Again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog. I don't know how it's going to end up, but hopefully it's fun. It's a fun time for you, for me for us. Let me know how June has been treating you in the comments below. Let's catch up. What have you been reading? What have you been watching? I hope you're having a lovely day, week, month, whenever you're seeing this. And thank you for watching. Thank you so much. If you like what you see, maybe consider subscribing. That way you never miss another video from me. Like, comment. I also have a Patreon if you wanna spend more time with me and see more of the things that I do. I have an Instagram as well. Like when I'm when I'm really quiet on YouTube, you can just go check my Instagram and just see if I'm alive. Most of the time I am. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's going to be it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.